Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Voter fatigue, political commentator weighs in on upcoming local government elections. More concerns about fire safety this holiday season. And later in sports, cricketer dropped from West Indies T20 squad. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. One political commentator has weighed in on the recent Don Anderson polls indicating a possible low voter turnout for the upcoming local government elections. Speaking on Power 106 Morning Agenda Tuesday, Damien Gordon says he's not surprised by the position taken by some voters. Karen Simpson reports. The local government elections are due in 2024, but a specific date is yet to be announced. The latest findings of a recent Don Anderson poll suggest that out of 1,015 registered voters islandwide, 22% say they were not sure about voting. Political commentator Damon Gordon says this does not come as a surprise due to several factors, including voter fatigue. So usually you'll have the general first and that is followed close by the local in this context their the vote apathy may be in the reverse vote of fatigue may be in the reverse in the sense that jamaican voters are aware that a general election should be called in a couple of years and i am not sure if they're excited about participating in a local government election which may be called just before a general election given the fact that you know, the local government election has been cancelled as well on so many and so many occasions. Mr. Gordon says there are still a number of Jamaicans who are unable to distinguish the roles of a member of parliament and a councillor. You know, I don't think many Jamaicans understand the distinction. So, for example, many of the, the functions and duties that Jamaicans believe that the, the member of parliament should undertake are really functions and duties that the council should be undertake. And therefore, their go-to for many representational issues are really their members of parliament and, and not their councils. So I think that has always been a challenge and consequently you find that it just affects the value that Jamaicans place on, on, local, on their participation in local government election. But pollster Don Anderson says persons indicated that they would change their minds if they are likely to benefit from the elections. 10% is second most important factor and it's important to note if I personally benefit. And what it is saying is that a lot of people don't think that by voting in a local government election, they're likely to benefit. 9% say if they could fix the infrastructure, road, water, and light, which impacts them directly in their community, then they would be inclined to go to vote. And the other issue that is of importance, 9% say that the representatives are not really visible. So if they come out more, and if they show that they are, in fact, anxious to work along with us in the community, then that might encourage us to come out to vote. Concerns are being raised about a number of persons who are still not following fire prevention and safety tips. As such, there is an appeal for Jamaicans to take the necessary precautions to reduce incidences of fire, especially during this holiday period. The Jamaica Fire Brigade says it recorded some 57 fires across the island for November. Deputy Superintendent of the Jamaica Fire Brigade in charge of the Mandeville Fire Station, Rohan Powell, says 10 of those fires were considered major. Mr. Powell was addressing last Thursday's monthly meeting of the Manchester Municipal Corporation. We had 39 genuine bush structures would have comprised that malicious false alarms. We are still playing with those where persons believe they just call the fire brigade, send them on their merry way for their own fun. Uh, two false alarms with good intents. Those fires were seen, but the cities acted expeditiously and saved um, the premises. We had special service, nine of those, and three motor vehicle accident calls. Eight adults and one child were affected during the same period. Mr. Powell says there was over 500 billion Jamaican dollars worth of damage to properties. We had a 10 apartment fire in Guilford Gardens, Manchester. $2.3 million was lost. We had another 10 apartment dwelling house at Caledonia Boulevard. $7.7 million in loss. We had a one apartment storage at Kingsland, where $100 million Sorry, $3.2 million was in loss. A three-apartment abandoned dwelling at Porus, Manchester. 
valued at estimated value at over five hundred thousand dollars. We had an eight apartment dwelling house at Spring Garden in Trelawney that was one outside of parish. Nine million dollars went up in flames. And with an increased usage of electricity anticipated during this festive season, he is appealing to councillors to assist the fire brigade by inviting them into their divisions to meet with the various groups. We want to spread the, the message. We want to ensure that the people are getting it. Because the cost of reconstruction is way greater than that was lost. And so we want you to work with us going forward to ensure that we can empower the people, give them the necessary information to mitigate against the disasters. With the Christmas holidays just days away, there are questions surrounding how commercial activities will be treated in Montego Bay, St. James. The current state of emergency is expected to expire on Thursday, December 21. Karen Simpson reports. Mayor of Montego Bay, Leroy Williams, is assuring residents that the parish will have Grand Market on Saturday, December 23. But Mr. Williams says the details have not been finalized. As you know that St. James is under a state of emergency and there's a possibility that there might be curfews. Um, so I cannot say definitively um, what the, the, the time will be. I know it was our intention to let the vendors come out from about 1 o'clock and uh, normally they would go until about 3 a.m. the next day. But I'm not sure what's going to happen there because, as I said, um, there will be a state of emergency. Part of the issue is that the parish has been plagued by crime. Mr. Williams is urging residents to partner with the police to help reduce crime in the parish. As a municipal corporation, we are concerned about the, the uptick in um, crime in Montego Bay. But what is obvious is that the police cannot do it alone. So we as law-abiding citizens will have to play our role. In the meantime, the mayor is encouraging vendors who will be participating in Saturday's Grand Market to stick to the designated areas to avoid their goods being seized. To keep the vendors from selling on the sidewalks, um, we just have to de depend on our um, enforcement service for municipal police and the, the JCF. So as far as I'm concerned, that's what we'll have to do is enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. Carrie and Simpson for TVJ News. With Jamaica recording over 1,200 murders as at November 30, the Minister of Local Government, Desmond McKenzie, is appealing to citizens to let peace reign during this festive season. Let us try to minimize as best as possible, the acts of violence against each other. Let us use the birth of Christ as a meaning of saying to our brothers and sisters, let bygones be bygones. Mr. Mackenzie was speaking at the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation's tree lighting ceremony. Meanwhile, the People's National Party minority leader, Andrew Swaby, also reiterated calls for peace. While we do celebrate Christmas, I want to hasten to say also that if you drink, don't drive. Let us be safe on the road. And let us also have a peaceful Christmas. Kingston Mayor Delroy Williams says this year's event is a significant one for children. For the children to understand the important role they play in making their country strong, in making their country prosperous in making their country progressive. But beyond that, for our children to understand the importance of a strong country in the world, that is significant to me. 
The future of Yala's market in St. Thomas remains in limbo. Earlier this year, local government minister Desmond McKenzie said the market would go back to its original use. But Councilor for the Yalas Division, John Lee, has taken chairman of the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation, Hubert Williams, to task. Mr. Lee wants Mr. Williams to provide an update on a letter that was written to Mr. McKenzie on the lease status of the market. I just want to know, based on question that is going to show at me when January starts, because you know people are of concern. So I don't want to facilitate any incorrect information. We can Mr. Williams responded. For end of the lease. So once the lease is expired, then we will take the necessary action to reclaim the market. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. A family is seeking your help this afternoon to find their missing relative. He is 70-year-old Silborn Brown from Powland District in Manchester. Mr. Brown was last seen three weeks ago. He was wearing a black and white striped shirt and black pants. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Silborn Brown is being asked to contact the Cross Keys Police Station or call 119. A mother is appealing to Jamaicans to help her son who is on the brink of becoming paralyzed. Doctors recommended urgent corrective surgery for her son who was diagnosed with scoliosis. Kirkwright tells us more. Papin High student O'Shane Morgan is a big sports fan. He's a member of the school's under-14 football squad and is regarded as a valuable player. A year ago, Oshain started having serious back pains which limited his movement on and off the field. Oshain was diagnosed with severe scoliosis. My pain's been worsening, worsening up quite months now. I'm like, it's affecting my, my daily, my daily um, things. Like, I cannot do no sports. I see where he wants to push. But as soon as he, he intends to give that extra push, he has to stop, primarily because of that pain. That's the severity of the pain. He experiences the discomfort all day long, even while sleeping. But it's especially bad when he has to stand up in buses while traveling to school. O'Shane is no longer able to sit through the duration of his classes, and that is affecting his grades. Most while I I I can I cannot sit um sit down in my seat. I I I I I have to get up and and, and walk around for for a little bit to the pain to um to ease up. Depressing news for his mother, Julia Edwards who has been trying against the odds to get a CT spine scan and MMR done on O'Shane. Those were recommended by doctors before they can attempt to fix his spine. I went to Chris Radiology was the last place I went to. They said that one is for 120, one is for 135. Thousand? Right, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't have that money, honestly. Doctors have recommended early corrective surgery and his mother knows the likely outcome if it's not done soon. So, she's on a quest to get assistance. I'm asking you all Jamaicans, please, combine and help my son, please. He urgently needed the surgery. Persons willing to help can call 876-440-2451. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. It's time for the Business Minute. The Bank of Jamaica is projecting that for December 2023, currency issued by the central bank will increase by $29.7 billion. If achieved, that will be 11.7% higher than the $253.7 billion issued by the central bank as at November this year. Now, the BOJ says this projected growth represents a year-over-year -year increase in the currency issue of 21.2%. 
The central bank says the projected growth is consistent with higher cash demand for the calendar year to date and reflects continued growth in both the real gross domestic product and the prices of goods and services. Further afield, Southwest Airlines has been fined a record $140 million by the U.S. Department of Transportation over its operational meltdown in 2022. Now, the penalty is about 30 times larger than any other previous fine levied against an airline in U.S. history. Millions were left stranded after Southwest cancelled more than 16,900 flights during a busy week of holiday travel last winter. The majority of the fine will go towards compensating future Southwest passengers affected by cancellations or delays caused by the airline, while $35 million will be paid to the government. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Machine Masters. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, attorney Linnell McGinley Liddy has created history by becoming the first Caribbean national and second black woman to assume the role of commissioner of the New York City Department of Correction in its 128-year history. Her appointment has been welcomed by the New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who praised her for her contributions to the department's progress over the last 23 months. As commissioner, McGinley Liddy pledges to work tirelessly to create safe and humane conditions for those entrusted in the department's care. On the international scene, rescuers are racing to find survivors after a powerful earthquake hit northwestern China. At least 126 people have been killed in the country's deadliest earthquake for years. The 6.2 magnitude quake hit mountainous Gansu province around midnight on Monday, also shaking neighboring Qinghai. Authorities say fatalities may rise with more than 700 reported injured in icy conditions. Chinese President Xi Jinping has ordered thousands of rescue crews in the region, among the poorest and most diverse in China. And a volcano has erupted on the Reykjanes Peninsula in southwest Iceland after weeks of intense earthquake activity. The eruption started north of the town on Monday. Iceland has been bracing for volcanic activity for weeks. Since late October, the region around the city Reykjavik has been experiencing an increase in earthquake activity. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Carrie Ann Simpson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jermaine Brown. 